Jackson Olesapit, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Kenya and the Bishop of All Saints Cathedral Diocese. Uh, we are delighted uh, as we come to the close of this year uh, to announce to you that we are going to host our defined conference uh, beginning of uh, the month of November. Uh, this conference uh, theme is Launching into the Deep. <laughs> Daily 
challenges that we have gone through as a church, as a country, and as a world. We thank you that you've continued to keep us and preserved us. And Father, we bring our thanks and praises to you. And we ask this morning that you may come and start with us in these day, three days of conferencing, where we will seek a renewal of our hearts by recommitting our lives and to you. We pray that you may take us deeper into a relationship with you. We pray that you save us from shallowness and help us to be swimmers who are deeper in matters of God. And so we ask Holy Spirit of God to lead and guide us as we go through this morning and the entire day. All the speakers, we dedicate them, Lord, to you. We pray that you'll put in them your word, that as they speak, they will speak only of your oracles and your people listening to us here physically and those away from here will also be blessed. So Holy Spirit, it is your turn to encourage your church, come encourage us for these three days ahead of us. We invite you in our midst, in the name of God, Father, Son. Amen. Thank you. I request that uh, briefly we take our seats. And the singers, you remain there because of the movement. And I just want to take this opportunity. Uh, your Grace, the most celebrated Dr. Jackson Melissa Pitt, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Kenya, and the Bishop of Osses Cathedral Diocese. Uh, joining in 
and we want to really thank God for the opportunity he has given us as a diocese to gather to worship God in this divine conference. Before that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we are here standing today to worship you amidst the many challenges facing our nation and nations of the world because of COVID-19. Lord, we bring our prayers and supplication to you that this pandemic will be wiped be in that place where we shall say the Lord has done it and we are free of COVID-19 as the peoples of the earth. But Lord, remind us the things that you wanted us to learn through this and continue to reach our spirits and our our attention to you, O oh God. And Father, as we you in this divine conference, may your word impact our lives in a new way. Renew our spirits, O oh God. Refresh us and uh, impact new knowledge and understanding of who you really are to us and to the people that we minister. So, Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to take charge as we continue in this conference. And even as we begin exploring your word, O oh God, we pray that you will uh, lead us by the power of the Holy Spirit to learn the things that you want us to learn. Use me as you will, as a vessel, that, Lord, our hearts and our minds will be enriched by your word. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we delve into the Bible exposition, I want to say a little bit about the Defined Conference. And this is because we know there are many people who are joining us who may not know what Defined Conference is. This is a conference that uh, this diocese has envisaged a few years ago that we gather every time once a year, towards the end of the year, normally in the month of August, to have a moment of de dedicating ourselves to God as a diocese and joined by other people, we have been joined by international community and our partners all over the world. And this conference has, give, has given us an opportunity to renew ourselves and uh, rejuvenate our spirits as we focus our attention on God. Define, as we all understand it, is the very imagination of God himself because he is, he is a divine Lord. And this conference is dedicated to worship the divine master and uh, invite the divine presence of God into our church, our nation, our communities, our families, so that we are completely overrun by the presence of God. And that is why we normally gather to surrender ourselves to God. And uh, our theme this year is launching into the deep. We shall be exploring that theme shortly. But because this is the first day in which we are gathered to begin our conference, I now want to urge those who are here to stand and those who are even watching us so that we declare this conference officially opened so that we will continue uh, now uh, in a conference that we have officially launched and opened and I now take this opportunity to declare 2020 defined conference of uh, All Saints Cathedral Diocese in Nairobi officially opened in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may now take your seats. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Dear delegates and participants of All Saints Cathedral Diocese uh, Defined Conference, it's a great joy that we are all gathered here at St. Francis Karen for an annual conference. It is a joy and a miracle and a great blessing. I say a miracle because we were not anticipating to do much in terms of what we did plan when COVID strike the land. 
we were coming from a lockdown and things eased out a little but in the last one month particularly the month of October we have seen a resurgence of COVID-19 positivity rate in the country we have seen, seen many deaths happening in a very very short time and it's a moment that we are here rededicating ourselves to God again that we may be healed that our nation may be healed and uh, set free from the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects many organizations many institutions had to sit and we also had our own sitting to review um, budgets because uh, incomes are lost finances have diminished resources uh, many people have to think re uh, new strategies of doing things and how to do them and it was not very clear how we are going to hold such a conference but we want to thank God that we are able to meet in the form in which we are meeting a few physical presence but many of you watching us from wherever you are it's a miracle because technology has also taught us and uh, in this uh, time of COVID-19 we have been able to learn very fast to engage online this reminds us of what the gentleman who established Facebook said when he came to Kenya a few years ago he said our forefathers and our great -grand grandfathers foraged in the land they depended on the land for their sustenance they lived subsistent lives he said our fathers lived in the cities they were supported by industries and commerce but this generation our generation live online forage online do business online communicate online and gather online we did not know exactly what he was saying when he made that statement but today during COVID moments we can fully understand what he meant that the law uh, the world today can only gather online uh, is doing business online is interacting online more than the physical interaction because of the challenges of COVID-19 indeed it is a miracle that uh, God has enabled the human mind to pursue discovery innovation and creativity that we are able to engage in such a space at a time like this the year 2020 therefore has been interesting an interesting year a year full of challenges but also with immense opportunities that have been brought even out of those challenges you know when we began the year 2020 when people were celebrating new year the hopes were very high the anticipation was very high and actually i remember the many sentences that were coming that uh, 2020 is a year of double double 2020 double double blessing double double opportunities double double everything but it turned out to be a year of half halves when businesses were lost everything was being slashed by half or even more than half that is a reality but there are other things that uh, have increased like now connectivity uh, online has increased and uh, this space has, has has increased i was talking one time to the bishop of canterbury and he was telling me in their large cathedral in london ever they have been hardly able to gather 200 people on a sunday basis so the the worshipers have diminished but they said during covid the followership online has hit over 20,000 people uh, in one worship session so if it is in terms of outreach and uh, the, the 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 numbers that are following and listening to various speakers and expositors of the gospel the opportunity of outreach has been enormous even at this time when we all think the lockdown has hampered 
the spread of the gospel. This is a testimony that God's word has never been in quarantine, will never be in quarantine, and cannot be under lockdown. It will always find a way because it is moved by the Spirit of God. And that's what we shall be delving in today as we discuss about this divine presence of God in our midst. So, we are gathered here for our Defined Conference 2020. We meet at a time when uh, also the country is charged politically. There is a lot of tension. The BBI report is out and there are proponents of it and those who feel it's not a good document. People are out on the streets hitting the ground running and as usual and very typical of Kenya, our politicians always go ahead of everybody else and put their interest before the interest of Kenyans. Where are we as a church at this moment? And I think God has given us this place a special space to be as we begin our defined conference to pray for this nation and uh, to nourish our souls so that the Lord will insulate us and protect us from the negative effects of negative politics that uh, spend a lot of negative energy in our midst. It's our prayer that the Christian family will be able to stand firm and stand for that which pleases God and not that which pleases man. And the Lord will deliver us and use his church to be that uh, hope giver. For we are a people of hope. The theme of this conference is drawn from Luke 5, 4. Launching into the deep. Simon Peter and his friends had toiled the whole night on the high seas. But unfortunately, they had caught nothing. In the morning, the fishermen were at the shore at the lake washing and repairing their nets as usual when Jesus showed up. Fishermen on the Sea of Galilee used to use nets, uh, often bell-shaped, uh, to catch their fish. That was the technology of that time. The nets are washed after every fishing expedition. They also come to mend and remove all uh, the plants of the sea and whatever it has collected that is not wanted because it will destroy the nets. And they will spread them, not just to dry, but to locate where holes might have happened so that they mend them. And there was a business of mending the nets every, uh, after every fishing expedition. This is what the disciples were doing when Jesus showed up. Then the fishermen uh, were astonished when he came and the crowd was following him. And he needed an opportunity to speak to the crowd. Maybe the crowd, the fishermen thought, oh, who is this? And what is he doing and why with these old people? Probably their first instant was Today we shall have a big market, but the tragedy was we have no fish. You know, when you see people coming and walking in large numbers, you think now the market, Kwakiswaili uh, Onasema, Soko Imenoga, Sokoni Sasa Imeja, na Itakuwa Mzuri Sana, Kwetu Onasema, Sokoni Leo Iko Moto Sana. When things are selling at very high prices, uh, the Soko uh, is in a hot mood. Probably that was the imagination, but their big worry was, why such a crowd when we have no fish? Because we caught none at night. Little did they know that Jesus had a different agenda. He arrived and he needed their boats, not to fish, but to use as a podium to address the surging crowds. The background of the book of Luke was that it was written by Luke 
uh, a medical doctor, a Greek and a Gentile. And it's the only book in the New Testament and the book of Acts that are written by a non-Jew, a Gentile in particular. He was a companion of Paul. And uh, the book narrates uh, the birth and preparation of Jesus Christ as Savior. It covers the message uh, of the ministry of Jesus in Galilee. Uh, it speaks about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Uh, it speaks about the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. So it gives a full account of what Jesus did, particularly from the time he began his ministry. Just a little mention about his birth and uh, the lineage so that we know where did Jesus come from in terms of Jewish tradition and family. So that is the background of the book. The context in which Christ commands Simon to let down his nets and launch into the deep, which is our topic of discussion, uh, was that, as I said earlier, these men had a whole night trying to catch the fish with their full expertise. They have been there many times. They know the behavior of the sea. They know when it becomes rough. They know the points in which fish can be caught. And they know too well that fishing happens too much at night because that's when the fish come to the service where the water is warmer. So when you go during the day and the water is cooler at the service, you know, it's a, one of those mysteries of God that when the sun is on, the water in the service is cooler, and when the sun is not there, the heat that the sea has absorbed during the day will make the water at the service more warmer. Uh, I don't know what science uh, is behind it, but that is how nature is constructed. So the fish will tend to come to the service at night because the water is a little warmer. These guys did what they can do practically uh, with their expertise and they have been there and they have caught many fish before. But this particular night was so unique and so devastating to them that none of them caught even a single fish. And Jesus comes and asks Simon Peter, can I get your boat to use? When Jesus had finished addressing the crowd, he asked the man, now you can engage in your fishing expedition. Not wait tonight, but go now. Just go. Take your ship a little further into the depth of the sea. Go and fish. You know, if it were me, and uh, the first answer of uh, uh, Peter was, you know, Master, I've been there. We toiled all night. We know when the fish are supposed to come. And sometimes they will entice them with some lighting so that the light attracts the fish. That's why you see in Lake Victoria and other lakes, uh, during the night you'll see the fishermen traps uh, with a little light around them to attract the fish. He said, I've used all the tricks and the technology I know and the techniques I know, but uh, Master, it has been difficult. It was so hard. I cannot do it. But because Jesus insisted, Simon Peter answered, and these are the words he answered, verse 5. Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let my nets down. To launch into the deep, we must take a step of faith and trust. The deep and the deep part of the sea represent that place which can be very, very scary. 
and a lot of tales have been told by many traditions about the sea. Uh, even when you go to Mombasa, the stories you hear about the sea and the demons and the Majini is so scary. Have you ever heard of those stories? Uh, it is the place of the sharks. It is the place of danger. And here Jesus say, launch into the deep. This statement draw to us that uh, launch into the deep is equivalent to total surrender at a point of helplessness and hopelessness. The answer of Simon Peter and those of the disciples is a very hopeless one. Master, we have been there the whole night. There is nothing there. We can tell you for true, there is nothing. And to make matters worse, it is during the day. We don't fish during the day. You should have told us, wait until night, so that we will launch then into what you are calling the deep. But because you say so, the point of surrender arrives. Peter said, because you say so, I will lay them down. I have surrendered. I have put aside my skills. I have put aside my self-trust. I have put aside my experience of what I know and what I have done before. I now go by your word. I surrender to what you say. So brethren, as you watch us, as you participate, so for those of us who are here, launching into the deep, first and foremost, is to arrive at a place of total surrender. A place of helplessness. A place where you are no longer trusting on what you think is yours, what you think you know, what you think surrounds you, what you think you are connected with, including your own family and connections, uh, what you think you have, what you think you have made over the years, because we tend to uh, encircle ourselves with things that we have created, maybe wealth, maybe power, maybe position, maybe authority, maybe technology, maybe knowledge, and we can easily hide behind those and still beat our chest and say, it is my making. Brothers and sisters, launching into the deep is surrendering what we think is ours. What we think is our capability. What we think is our ability. What we think insulate and surround us. What we think we have created and surrounded ourselves with. Their connections and all those things around us. Surrender them to Jesus. Launching into the deep is total surrender. I don't know how to swim, but uh, I have watched several of my children, they are, they are now good swimmers, uh, when they were learning to swim, I went with them to Mombasa and one day they were in the swimming pool for eight hours without coming out, until their eyes completely turned red. And as I watched them, they began with the shallow areas. And when they began to master their shallow areas, they began to want to try the deep end. And uh, I see how scared they can look when they are trying to encourage each other, let us throw ourselves into the deep end. But slowly, they did it. I don't know how they did it. And, uh, you know, sometimes when they gain a little bit more confidence, uh, one will come behind the other in the deep end, they were trying to charge each other, and they throw the, one another uh, into it. It was a very scary moment for me because I knew I cannot even save them if they begin to drown. So I kept on calling the attendant, please don't go away, uh, be around them. Uh, I was not releasing myself to that sort of surrender as a father. But these children completely reach a point in which they release themselves and they will just jump to that deep end like it is not dangerous. Maybe because of ignorance. Maybe they don't know how dangerous it could be. But that is how they learned. Learning to trust God is a journey. And we need to shed off some of the things that we cling to and think they are the one that gives us hope so that 
we give our total hope to him who has who has power and able to do more than what we can ever imagine so you will notice that Jesus called people who uh, uh, are already uh, engaging into something struggling with an experience people who have uh, learned to trust themselves because uh, they have learned how to and he calls them out of that self trust and send them to new ground so launching, in, launching into the deep means you are sent into new ground amen new space a hard space I think by large COVID-19 has sent the world into new ground new space new imagination and here we need total surrender to God that it is only you and only you who can do something about a hard situation which we have no answer to Simon Peter and his friends had no answer to what Jesus was telling him, take your nets back to the deep where they have had an opportunity to try with all their technology and there was nothing in the sea. So, launching into the deep means launching into the depth of experience of the presence of God around us. What Jesus was confirming to the disciples is, you know, with my presence, things are different. With my presence, the sea can be productive. With my presence, the sea can bring forth what you have been looking for, even when you have not got it, because my presence has everything you need. Actually, the essence of Divine Conference is to calling out and crying out for that presence of God to our space and our situation because we are helpless without Him. We are non-productive without him. We cannot protect ourselves without him. We cannot lead ourselves without him. We cannot engage meaningfully without him. This space where the disciples were uh, actually was a very devastating situation. They depended on fish for their own food and sustenance. They depended on this fish for trade and commerce and uh, livelihoods. And they depended on this fish to feed their families. They depended on this fish to build their houses. They depended on this fish to climb the social uh, economic ladder from one space to another space. <coughs> they, needed <coughs> they needed this uh, fish to take them to another level. But here there was none. Their hopes were dashed. They did not know what to take to their families that day. They did not know what to say to them. They had no, nothing to gain an additional coin. Their projects will stall if they are already constructing and are depending on this trade to finish their projects. They were to come home helpless. But when Jesus arrived and said, launch into the deep, hope is renewed. Hope is increased. Brothers and sisters, when we surrender our selves, our thoughts, our minds to the will of God, and launch into the deep in communication and conversation with Jesus, we thrive. We get everything we need. On Sunday, we were reading John 10.10. 10. And uh, the first part of John 10.10, 10, Jesus stated the problem that the world is facing today, and even in his own time. And he said, the problem is, a thief comes to do three big things. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come so that they have life and have it in abundance. So
So Jesus here is bringing two contrasting scenarios. One, the devastation, the destruction, the massacres created by the thief. On the other hand, is the burdens life provided by the divine uh, presence of him in our world. On Sunday, I said this, uh, the imagination of the thief, normally when we read that text, is that person who we are waiting at every night, uh, sleeping half awake and half asleep, thinking somebody is going to do a break-in. Uh, it is not the normal burglars and the thieves that uh, come to our spaces physically, Jesus was talking about. He was talking of the thief who will enter into our space through our minds, deep conversations in our minds that find their root into the heart of men and when it lands into the heart of men and destroy that heart, you are completely killed and destroyed. So the imagination here is the presence of what the Bible uh, describe as Lucifer the deceiver of the world the one who will come to deceive the world who will linger around the minds of people in the world to deceive them and uh, to steal their minds and to kill their spirits and to destroy them completely as human beings as one uh, force with the Bible described as a force of darkness other uh, Bible uh, uh, verses, especially in the New Testament, particularly the writings of Paul, describe it as the principalities, powers and dominions that are against the will of God. And sometimes we imagine these principalities and these powers to be powers out there, like kingdoms with a king seated. And uh, little do we know that these principalities linger around our minds. And when we let them in, they'll find their way into the heart and they will destroy the heart and completely kill the spirit and finish us all together. Jesus is speaking about those moments of your mental conversation. And I said on Sunday, and I want to repeat here, there is no human mind that is blank at any one time. Even when you are sleeping, your mind is still active and conversing in form of dreams, sometimes nightmares, sometimes good dreams. You find yourself laughing, uh, experiencing some of the old experiences, or even seeing scary things you have never seen before. Because the mind of man, uh, before you die, is always active and uh, in activity. And the mind of man is always talking in the language you understand. It will speak in English or speak in your mother tongue or in the language you understand. Uh, have you ever imagined yourself uh, quiet and uh, your, your mind is completely quiet? Does it go quiet? You're always thinking of one thing or another. Even when a, a lecturer or a teacher is in front teaching, some of us sometimes are just writing our own things or drawing our flowers and things because the mind is always in constant conversation. I was imagining when Jesus was walking for those 40 days and nights in the desert when he was uh, undergoing temptation. Where was Satan? Normally the imagination is a snake is around him. And normally the pictures we get in the Jesus film is that the snake will appear uh, to come and uh, speak. But uh, it was deep conversation in his mind that uh, he was being shown, suppose you abandon what God is thinking and you become the rule of this earth. And the, all these things will be given unto you. And then you abandon your father and then you declare yourself, uh, you know, like the way humans being do. We almost seen yesterday in America, uh, self-declaration that I'm now I have won and everything is now sorted. You know, that, 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 that space where man always wants that freedom to say, yes, I am free and I can do my things. These are the deep conversations we normally engage in our minds. Um, and sometimes when you allow too much negative engagements, they cause misery and worry and make us uh, begin to have imagination which will lead to a state of hopelessness and despair and uh, draw a lot of negative energy. And when we despair and completely are hopeless, 
we find ourselves in uh, a self-destruction mode. So what does launching into the deep means? It is launching into the deeper discussions with the Lord. Amen? Deeper discussions with Jesus Christ. Deeper discussion with his word. When we interact with the word of God and deeply uh, interact with it, great imagination of our experience with the Lord will emerge. That is why uh, soon after the early church and the church was in dispersion and in the so-called dark ages, the church went to thrive actually in solitude in places called the monasteries. And the monks will go there to meditate throughout their lives and meditate with the word of God. And you know what was the direct result of the, the monasteries? We may not know. We may not understand. Actually, music and the best music in praise of God was developed in the monasteries. Great thinkers emerged in the monasteries. Pythagoras, who developed Pythagoras' theorem, a mathematical uh, solution, those imagination appeared to him in the monasteries. Development of agriculture, because you have to go out of those caves to cultivate, uh, developed in the monasteries. Modern knowledge and thinking actually developed in the monasteries. And uh, philosophy was uh, uh, focused into an imagination about God more deeper into that space. You know, we had uh, philosophers like Plato and the rest. Their imagination was on a human uh, perspective and uh, astrology and learning what the stars say. And they developed a lot of uh, big thinking and, and, and speaking great things, but they did not imagine too much into the space of God. But in the monasteries, a lot of my imagination into God's space was done. When again the church regained uh, in terms of authority because the monasteries was as a result of persecution and the church running away and began to run away from the world of sin. Now the church began to thrive again and uh, they become the center of life. They control commerce and industry because of the imagination from the monasteries. And uh, uh, they began to be the learned ones you remember when the Latin language was the language of uh, education and it was only the priests who were fast in that language and they were the only one to interpret the Bible and uh, uh, they began to interpret the Bible to suit their own human interest we all remember what led to the reformation that the church began to be a business center and they developed a theology like such as the theology of purgatory where souls are held somewhere before they go. They are in a holding room before they go to heaven. And you have to pay heavily what they call indulgences for, for the souls to be released of your loved ones. So the church got a new revenue stream because they developed a theology uh, around it so that they protect their revenue stream even spiritually or in spiritual terms. The reformation came to liberate the church by showing that salvation is not by what we do and how much we pay, it is by the grace of God. And Martin Luther led the reformers. But again, the church went into lapse during the time of enlightenment until the great revival movement of George Whitefield uh, emerged. So anytime uh, the world and the church feel comfortable with the space in which we are, like the fishermen when they are getting their fish, uh, without any hindrance uh, the human spirit take over and uh, we become shallow and when we begin to be shallow God always appears and say delve into the deep delving into the deep is get into deeper conversation around God's word the church is sustained and I dare say not by how much skills we have developed not by how quality leadership we have, not by how much resources are around us, the church will be sustained by the living word of God. Amen? The church can only be sustained by the living word of God. Let me give you an example. The church today in America, in the West, is well endowed with resources. 
huge sums of money, investments, great ones. They have the best professors in theology, best seminaries. They have the best interpreters in the worldview of uh, the word of God. They have the, the best writers who have wrote on devotional and other things. But because of the lack of delving into the deep with the word, the church is dying, even in the midst of all those resources. It's not unique and peculiar to the West. It can happen and it is happening even within our midst. That when the church is so comfortable with the physical uh, material things that we can see and touch, our message and communication of, with God becomes shallow. We will always be in shallow ground and there will be no fish. There will be no uh, sustenance. So as we learn from this verse, launching into the deep, is launching into deeper conversation with God's word in an amazing way. And this conversation must be real conversation of learning and reading the word of God, not like a storybook. Reading, asking questions. You know the disciples at that moment of asking Jesus question. You know we have been there. How can it be? We have been in that sea. How can it be? We have gone the right time of fishing. You are telling us to go the wrong time. How can it be? So deeper conversation with the divine presence of God is not just that place of praise and worship. Praise and worship is, is, is good. It sends us into that trans moment. But it is a moment of deeper discussions, asking hard questions. Lord, how can it be? Why? And with the many whys, the Lord will appear in his presence and say, launch deeper into your trust and faith in me. So as I conclude, three things. Launching into the deep is that place of total surrender. Launching into the deep is removing all else that we cling to and turn to God and trust him and depend on him. And lastly, launching into the deep is getting into a deeper relationship with God. Conversing through prayer, through reading the word of God, engaging in Bible study fellowships, in meetings where God's word is being uh, expounded, watching uh, expositors, uh, and there are many now in various channels, but letting yourself, not just uh, taking what the speaker is saying, letting yourself to get into a deeper conversation personally with Jesus the Lord. So launching into the deep is developing a personal relationship with God. There are instances you hear many people speak and they will always say, Nataka kusema kama vile fulani alisema. I want to say like so and so. Like so and so said. Have you had those, those kind of conversations? You know, in our relationship with Jesus, we have to go beyond, I've heard that sermon, I've heard that preacher like the preacher so and so says what does the Lord say with you what are you saying with Jesus yourself personally what is your individual personal discussion and conversation with him not as somebody else has said it but what has Jesus said to you what are you saying to him is what matters most launching into the deep is to get out of the comfort of a crowd, the comfort of companions, the comfort of connections, the comfort of your family, the comfort of the resources around you, and in total surrender, and in that place of need, and uh, being vulnerable, and lacking completely, you surrender to the Lord. And you know what? He will never disappoint. Jesus, when he arrived at this shore, found an, uh, 
uh, a group that is completely uh, shattered their hopes, the, whose hopes are shattered. A group that um, were helpless and looking tired. They do not even know whether after mending the, the, the nets, they are going back and they will get anything. Because coming out without a single fish is so devastating. You know somebody is waiting for that food. A buyer, your family, everybody is waiting for you. What are you going to say? But here, in total surrender, they said, we will try because you say so. Can we all reach to that place where we can tell the Lord, yes, Lord, I have heard you personally and specifically. I will trust you entirely. I will trust you with my life. I will trust you with my needs. I will trust you with my weakness. I will trust you with what I am going through, maybe an ailment. I will uh, trust you with everything that has gone south in my life. I will trust you with that addiction that has never uh, been able to get out of me that is going to get out of it. I'm going to get out of it. I trust you in total surrender. When we do that and launch out into the deep, Jesus changes everything. So God is here with us. And as we gather in this defined conference, we need to, be, to, to, to make this moment a waiting time and the moment we wait upon the Lord to speak to us as we speak to him. So I invite you all who have joined us and who are here to make these three days a moment of your deeper conversation with the Lord, taking and casting all your cares to him, because as Peter says, he cares. Cast all your cares unto me, because I care. Cast your all uh, worries and uh, uh, fears unto the Lord because he cares, says Simon Peter. Maybe when he was writing his letter, he was drawing from all these experiences with the Lord himself. He was remembering that day when his worries was what to take home and when he cast his fears unto the Lord, he saw how much he cared. What happened to the disciples is that after launching into the deep, as I finish, their catch was enormous. Even that one boat which Peter was using uh, was not enough. They began to summon their fellow fishermen to come around and help to offset some of the fish into their own boats. They needed somebody to help pull because the catch was enormous. And you know, friends, when they arrived at shore, when they arrived at shore, the imagination was, thank you, Jesus. Today we can make good business. We have the fish, and you brought the crowd. You know, Jesus had a crowd. So if it was a good uh, a businessman, like of today, an entrepreneur, he would have said, Jesus, thank you so much. Now we have the fish, we have the market. Let your people buy now, and then you go home, and we go with our money. Is that what happened? What did they do? They realized fishing expedition is no longer important to them. They abandoned everything. They followed Jesus. They said, wherever you'll go, we will go. They followed him. And that's why Jesus turned in another instance to Simon Peter and said, now you are not going to fish fish. I'm now sending you as a fisher of men. The entire scenario change. The worldview change. When we allow God in this defined conference to be our companion and his defined presence and galvas over runners, overwhelm us, we will not get out of this conference the same way we came. We will go out a changed lot. Peter and his companion came out of the sea as fishermen but because of the presence of God how they were overwhelmed by this conversation with Jesus when they delved into the deep their worldview was completely changed and they followed 
the master to the very end of their ministry. May God help us so that when we delve into the deep, it will create an energy in us to follow Jesus the whole journey, to follow him through our entire lives. And this will open the heaven's gate that we shall reign with him in eternity. May our divine conference bring the divine presence of Jesus to every heart, every soul watching us and listening to us today. And may you and me become true followers of this Lord who has capacity to change our situation for our own good, for his own glory, for his own purposes. Let us pray. Once again, Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that you are calling us to delve into the deep. And the deep is not just the sea, that deep moment with you, a deeper relationship, deeper conversation with your word, in your spirit, in your presence, that, Lord, we shall never be the same again. As we continue listening to our various speakers in our defined conference this year, May you take charge and control of everyone who is going to speak to us. That Lord, at the end of this conference, we shall be saturated by your own divine presence. And our divine conference will truly carry the word that your divine presence is with us and in us. This is our prayer. Trusting and believing in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, thank you, thank you, your grace, for that message. Thank you for starting as well. It is truly encouraging to know that in this season and time, we can depend on God and we have God who is journeying with us. We are not alone. Thank you. And um, with that, I will ask um, the praise team to sing to Naenda Nasi, to Naoba Webuako Weda Nasi. Then thereafter, mm -hmm. we, will, we will ask the Archbishop to give us the benediction. we finish, don't leave. We will go to the hall for breakfast together. To now my way, Poaco. To now my way, Poaco. When the Nazi and now I'm a Jeshu to seek Come on, when I see, come on, I see, to take it, to to end and I to a to a
Thank <laughs> you.